this is Colin Dean with Think Computers. I'm taking a look at the Asus RT-N66U control panel. Uh, we're now doing all of our control panel things in video because it's a little bit easier to show you some video rather than show you 15 bajillion uh, screenshots like we used to. What you're looking at here is the network map page. Uh, you can see on here that we're currently connected to the internet with a WAN IP. Um, that is actually a, a client IP to my primary uh, my primary gateway. Um, the the wireless is currently set up on both 2.4 and <laughs> 2. Point, or, uh, five, excuse me, 5 gigahertz. We'll just deal with LastPass up there. Um, and it, it's been set up with uh, WPA2. Uh, I can see all the the, the LAN information down in here. Um, for both um, both wireless cards, I have an ADATA flash drive plugged in right now. Um, you can see in here that it's a 16 gig device. Um, <clears throat> there's FTP information available as well as being able to uh, quote unquote safely remove the disk in case you've uh, written anything and um, you're waiting for it to finish writing. Um, Take a look at the client list and see what clients are, are connected to it at some point. Um, Kid is the, the laptop that I'm on right now. Marl is another laptop that I was using earlier for testing. Um, looking around a little bit more, you can see that we're, we're operating in wireless router mode. Um, our firmware is up to date, uh, refreshed as of oh, a couple days ago. Uh, our two SSIDs are just the normal ones out of the box. Is that gonna, that's, yeah, the guest network indicator. This is the internet connection indicator, USB, and printer. Um, we'll pop over into guest network. I'm not going to set up some of this stuff because I we don't really need to test it a whole lot. It just kind of works. Um, but you're able to set up multiple guest networks so that you can effectively um, isolate certain guests from being able to or, or limit what certain guests are allowed to do on your internet connection. This is useful for people who have, people who want to have parties um, where they want to offer ga guests internet access but make sure that after the party's over um, perhaps a, uh, a friend with a chip on their shoulder can't drive by your house and um, download some illegal truxican porn or something like that. Uh, traffic manager will show you, um, will, will allow you to modify some of the, the uh, quality of service utilities. I have it turned off at the moment, um, as well as being able to show you ingoing and outgoing traffic. Um, you can see a little bit of activity there, not a whole lot. Um, this is just what's going on in the background, um, programs that are running on my laptop in the background. You can see those going. Parental control is another thing if you have uh, kids in the house that you want to keep them from um, getting on to the internet or getting onto the network at certain parts of the day, then um, this is a, a feature that's useful for that. Um, there are whole tons of stuff that you can do with the, the USB ports, the two USB ports on the device. Um, the AI disk is a, a great feature that allows you to access the contents of the USB disk from the internet um, using some uh, using a, a dynamic DNS system. Server Center, we'll, we'll pop into that, and you can see the the ability to use uh, DLNA to stream to various TVs, media players, and whatnot, um, as well as standard um, Samba sharing which is, uh, for those of you who are unaware with the term or un unfamiliar with the term Samba, that's uh, kind of the Unix community's name for um, Windows file sharing. You can also set up FTP, um, which I'll, I'll turn on. Oh, I've already got it turned on. Great. Um, and then some miscellaneous things for the, um, for the FTP primarily. AI Cloud is uh, a neat thing that allows you to access your access the USB drive um, from 
uh, an application on your phone. Uh, let's say you want to stream something, you want to listen to music. All of these are possible. Moving on into oh, there's, I've, there's some other stuff in here. Smart Sync. These are these are some other features of the AI Cloud. Um, and then there's a log, which is nothing in the log because I don't have it on. Going into the the advanced settings, um, the standard setup for wireless allows you to change the SSID, whether you want to hide it or not, um, the various modes of operation, ABGN, um, set your channel bandwidth, um, as well as which channel is going to be the upper or the lower channel uh, for extensions, um, authentication method, you know, what you want to use for um, your, your encryption things. Um, WPS I don't really know, I've never really known anybody who uses WPS um, maybe just in in the circles that I run with everybody prefers to simply use the um, set up an actual network key you know an actual pre-shared key to use uh, bridge functionality which is um, their terminology for WDS uh, wireless distribution system um, old school mesh networking that's not really actually mesh. Um, decent enough if you've only got a couple of access points and only a couple of devices accessing, but nowadays for the amount of bandwidth that people are using, not, not enough for, most ac for many uh, multi-device households. Set up Mac filter. Um, choose a, a radius authentication if you want to have your if you're in a small business or even a larger business and you want to have people authenticating to uh, a radius server um, that is connected generally in turn to an LDAP server of some kind, Active Directory or whatnot. Um, I actually had radius set up on or on my own router at one point and it was just a pain in the ass to set up on anything, well, a pain in the ass to set up on Windows. It worked fine on Linux and, and Macs. Ah, the professional settings. These are the, some of the, the things that we really like to tinker around with, um, especially the transmit power adjustments. Um, I know uh, I like to sometimes bump this up to 100 on some things. Uh, on my older on my older routers, um, I've seen people who have bumped this up to the theoretical, uh, I think the FCC limit is 1 watt something like that. Um, so people have bumped this up to a thousand with appropriate uh, cooling gear because it makes the, the wireless radio get really hot. Uh, going to these, some of the other things here. Let's see is the standard LAN settings that any every router has, the ability to change various uh, DHCP settings and set internal domain names, internal DNS, whatnot. Set up some static routes. Um, configure some IT, uh, IPTV things in case you have a set-top box that you want to make sure is able to access, um, as well as changing some different things about the switch. In a WAN settings, and you're able to change between um, the various expected WAN connection types, and so on and so forth. Change port triggering and and uh, port forwarding, you know, things that every gamer needs to eventually mess with at some point. Um, DMZ, although I don't really know, I don't know very many people who've ever used DMZs. I know um, I can actually only think of one time I've ever actually had a need for it. Everybody uses dynamic DNS to get back to their router for for something, even if they just want to check status. This is a, a great way to do it. And of course, um, allowing various VPNs to pass through the net. Um, IPv6. Hey, if you've if you've got it, if you want to use IPv6, um, doing it in the router is a great way to do it. Um, I'm not sure. I didn't see offhand if the router is capable of handling IPv6 at the um, at the router level. Okay, this this might be able to handle it. If, you know, if you're on an ISP that will give you an IPv6 address, otherwise you can use various um, six to four tunneling and whatnot. Um, 
VPN server, they're just using a standard pop top VPN server. Um, set up your, your username and passwords so that you're able to connect from anywhere. I do this extensively myself. Um, I'm, I'm almost always logged into my VPN at work or wherever I am, especially in coffee shops because I don't want any of my traffic going over the coffee shop uh, wireless. Well, at least not, uh, at least doubly encrypted. <coughs> Mess around with the firewall stuff if you'd want to. Um, most of these settings are pretty good out of the box on just about every router. Um, you know, URL filters, maybe, maybe let's say you wanna you wanna keep kids out of um, various naughty sites, then you know, great place to do it here. Various keywords you can also um, block. Let's say I uh, I know I in my own router I've blocked various ad networks so that. Um, those things can't even go through. You know, they don't even they don't even load. That's probably one of the better ways to do it. I don't even have to run ad block or anything like that. And there's also the network services filter. Administration is pretty standard. Um, you can change between you know, the the intended modes of, of wireless router mode or access point mode. You guys can't really see that. I'm like flailing my hands like crazy while I'm explaining this. Um, most people are going to have it in router mode unless you want it in access point mode. Let's say you've got, you know, I, theoretically if I were to keep the setup that I've got now, I would have this in access point mode um, because I don't, I wouldn't really want my, this one, this router also handling um, routing duties when I have a router that's perfectly capable of doing that. Um, being able to change the login name, password, various options. You know, if you want, if you really want people to be able to access via Telnet, go for it. Um, oh, I never changed the uh, never changed the time zone. Um, I always set pool.ntp.org for the. Um, the NTP server, that's like the first thing I do on every router that I ever touch. Firmware upgrade does it automatically. You know, it's standard in-place replacement, um, effortless. I, I was a little bit worried at first. I thought I had to go download it, but then I saw this check button here. Boom, it does it. And then the system log. And you can take a look and see through just the standard kernel log. I guess this is syslog. All the things that are going on in there and um, as well as GCP leases, wireless log that shows you things from the access point, port forwarding log, and the routing table. So one of the other cool things that you can do in here is um, associate, a, or you can plug in a uh, 3G or 4G wireless card in case your um, WAN connection goes down. Then the router will automatically kick on a uh, 3G or 4G connection. Of course, the router still needs to have power. This is not a battery backed up router, um, but Useful and useful in the event that you've got spotty cable, <laughs> Comcast, um, or maybe uh, Verizon's doing some updates to your FiOS, you know, whatever, what have you. Um, having uh, a Freedom Pop card plugged in there would make sure that you have at least got some kind of internet all the time. Freedom Pop being the the free um, up to 500 megabytes. Or I think yeah, it's like a hundred megabytes per month. So that's it. That's the uh, that's the ASUS RT N66U control panel. Much easier, much quicker than um, taking almost a hundred screenshots. Um, hope you enjoyed it. This is Colin Dean for Think Computers.